Russian military personnel refuse to attack Kharkiv. Military personnel from one of the motorized infantry battalions of the 44th Army Corps of the Russian Federation's armed forces reportedly refused to participate in the assault in the Kharkiv region according to the Atesh Partisan Movement Telegram channel. The partisans write that they received information from their agent serving in the mentioned battalion. According to him, the Russian militaries of this unit are well aware of the quality of fortifications on the Russian-Ukrainian border. They also witnessed failed reconnaissance and sabotage operations by Russian forces. Given this, when new signs in the form of a rhombus with a cross were applied to the equipment and an order was given, part of the unit refused to carry out the criminal will of the command. By the way, recognition signs are applied at their own expense. No one wants to go to certain death for any money, the statement said. At the beginning of May, Deputy Chief of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, Vadim Skibitsky, stated that Russia is preparing to advance into the Kharkiv and Sumy regions. He noted that the Russians do not have sufficient forces to capture Kharkiv or Sumy, but a hit-and-run operation is possible. On May the 10th, the Russian army attempted to break through the defense of the armed forces of Ukraine in the Kharkiv region. The current situation, according to the general staff, According to Reuters, Russian forces aim to push Ukrainian defenders back 100 kilometers from the Russian border to create a buffer zone. The National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine stated that the Russians have the resources to escalate actions in border areas of the region, but there is no talk of an advance on Kharkiv. The U.S. believe that the Russian army may be preparing for a larger scale advance on Kharkiv. The Russian forces may be preparing for a larger offensive on Kharkiv, stated John Kirby, the U.S. National Security Council coordinator for strategic communications. Kirby reminded that Russia has abandoned the northern part of the country of Ukraine and started focusing exclusively on the east. So it is very interesting and certainly concerning that they now appear to be setting themselves up to, at the very least, use long-range fires to try to range into Kharkiv. And one has to presume that you're not going to do that if you're not also thinking about some other larger assault directly on the city, Kirby said. The United States of America will provide Ukraine with weapons as part of a new $400 million military aid package, according to the White House and Andrew Yermak, the head of the office of the President of Ukraine. The text specifies that Biden has instructed Secretary of State Antony Blinken to allocate $400 million for Ukraine's needs. It should be noted that this is the second military aid package to Ukraine from the United States after Congress allocated funds for this at the end of April. According to Yermak, the new U.S. package includes additional ammo for Patriot and NASM systems, Stinger anti-aircraft missiles, more HIMARS systems with ammunition, 155mm and 105mm artillery shells, and equipment for integrating Western launchers, missiles, and radars with Ukrainian systems. The Pentagon specifies Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, M113 armored personnel carriers, anti-mine vehicles with ambush protection, and trailers for hauling heavy equipment. Tow missiles, Javelin and at 4 anti-tank systems, high-precision aviation ammunition, harm missiles, small arms and ammunition, explosive ammunition and demoning equipment, coastal and river patrol boats, and means of chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear protection, are all included in the assistance package. Prior to this, U.S. assistance to Ukraine had been suspended for several months due to funding running out. Immediately following the decision of Congress, U.S. President Joe Biden announced the first military aid package to Ukraine after a considerable hiatus. Later, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky clarified that the package included long-range Atoms missiles, which Kiev had long been asking Washington for. The total value of the weaponry included in the package amounted to billions of dollars. Работали. Лучше. 